Okay, here is the 2010 Kemworth T660. I always keep saying 660 or 680. Um, I usually do these videos when I post them, but the day I posted this truck, it was about to come down. Um, black clouds out there. So here it is. I got a lot of emails and stuff on this truck, so I figured this is a well-timed video. Um, so hopefully this will answer a lot of your questions. Pick this up. This came out of a, a fleet of hauling produce and clean truck, a little bit older, 1.3 million on it. Uh, same driver and did his own kinds of odds and ends, you know, try to do his simple fixes. So I try to clean that up mostly kind of do things the right way. Tires are good. Um, aluminums all the way around, uh, all the way in the rear, in the, in the, in the back as well. Uh, relatively clean. I installed all new LED light bars and everything that's what was on there but they were all breaking apart this main led that this box was all coming undone and so you have kemworth bag suspension and i think they're eaten dsps uh pretty much like 404s yeah kemworth walk and beam slide slide and fifth wheel lock i think this is a 2010 so there is a regen button but I think it has been deleted. I have a feeling. But um, like I said, pretty clean. Cummins ISX 600. So this is, that's really the most of it. You know, all clear coat, fading, stuff like that. I fixed some lights. Here, I'll open up the hood and we'll fire it up. New hood latch here. This was, uh, that was broken right up top. And then the other one, he kind of like chromed out. Yeah, you put like these covers on everything. And then, yeah, that that marker light's missing. I just didn't have one here in the yard. Let's see if we can. Give me a minute. These hoods are a little heavy. I always gotta latch that. I forget it. 600 horse. I did a brand new AC system. It actually worked, but it was leaking out of the front clutch. That is the most common thing. So brand new AC system, um, dryer right there, and new main drive belt and accessory belt. Um, he lost the cover that goes to the cabin filter, uh, but the actuator in this blower motor was broken. So it's actually now zip tied to the recirculation um, the recirculation setting, there's no direct air coming in there. Um, that was broken, so that seemed to be kind of common on pack car. Um, but fluids were good. Airbag, front suspension, front steer axles on bags, twin bags. Oh, okay, the hood actually says it's a T661. Just another 660, I guess. So this is probably like a 500 or a 475, maybe turned up to 600. I mean, they, they did make signature 600s, uh, but I think those had like chrome valve covers, I believe. 18 speed, you know, there's some of the other stuff that he quote unquote fixed. Uh, body's good though, uh, interior's okay. It just needs a little more love, a little more TLC, you know I mean? It's a owner operator truck, typical stuff like these covers everywhere he's got them back over here i i didn't i didn't replace that i did see these sets of horns and i think he tried to wire it to the city horn so the city horn doesn't work and i can't find the city horn anywhere i have scoured usually it's up in there so i think he tapped into it you know maybe that's what these are i'm not totally sure uh the air horn works and i'll fire it up here let me in the door so you can see and then i've done some other stuff i'll tell you about it but hid headlights uh all of that works high beams low beams these signals that he put on do not work I, they're just not plugged in but the marker lights obviously tail lights everything else works so i just cleaned it up this was filthy i don't know he just like threw food everywhere so that was cool so I cleaned all that up, but yeah, more of these like little chrome button things everywhere. Um, I took down all the covers, the shades, 
the curtains. The I have all of them. Um, but I mean, really, you know, beautiful button stitching and stuff. Kenworth does a great job with that. It looks really cool. I do like the color of the interior a lot. Very luxurious, kind of old school. Uh, looks like he put in a new legacy at some point. Get this out of the way so I can get back in there. And I did. I'll tell you about it while I just sit here. So 18 speed, 18 speed fuller. Um, obviously the factory one that, that is powered up, that does work. Um, pretty much all the gauges you need. The rear, let me see where it is. The rear axle temp does not work because the plug, it looked like maybe something hit it. The plug's just hanging there. But to pull the sensor out, you have to pull it out of the housing and that means all the oil's gonna come out. So I just left it there. But everything else works, oil pressure's good. Uh, I think someone's done something to the motor because it has 1.3 million on it and no blow by, plenty of power. Clutch feels good, transmission feels good. Um, so I think, you know, someone just took care of it or maybe someone did something. I'm not totally sure I don't get uh, records, you know, service records on it. But um, now everything's nice and clean. What I did do when I took it on its first, when I first got it, there was some extra slop, which is real common. Uh, the, the shifter bushing, you know, down in there where it attaches to the housing. Um, I put it in seventh and you could tell there's just, you know, not a lot of room here. Uh, and it would pop out of seventh all the time, seventh and third, it would just pop out. So I thought when you go to press it, I was hitting this cup holder. So I pulled this entire assembly out. That's why you see, see it all kind of cleaned up. All these bolts were kind of loose. So I ran new sheet metal screws um, and we fixed that, but there's still, it still will pop out of seventh on the low side of the splitter. Um, when you put it high side, it will stay in gear. And my transmission guy says, cause there's more torque actually on the transmission on high side in seventh on any gear. So uh, the main fix for that would be you drop the transmission, fix those sliding clutches and probably replace the, uh, the splitter valve or gear at the same time since you're gonna be in the transmission. But high and low, you know, main high and low works just fine, feels good. And um, so that was the other main fix. That was a bear to get out. That was not fun. So let me show you back here. Uh, let me see, let me turn on the lights. Everything works back there. So there you go. So studio sleeper, couch, drop down. Um, yeah, these, I just shoved them in here. Here are all the curtains for the windows and every bit of them is in there. Obviously I kind of forgot how it all goes in, but it's all there. Yeah, this was just filthy. I cleaned it all up, opened the doors. There's your controls. This does not have an APU. So it just uses a truck power. There's your bunk that I have. I had it buckled up there, but that whole thing will come down and put your mattress. I threw away the mattress. I didn't think anybody would want it, but LEDs on your main one. Speakers back here. I've seen many guys do this, shove foam and stuff like that, because these will kind of start to rattle going down the road. It's very, very common. There's some more foam pieces or little wood blocks. I've seen it all the time. Um, everything looks pretty good, you know, for an older sleeper. And um, uh, fridge, I uh, don't think was working. This door will just open. It just, yeah, it doesn't really close. You could tell he duct taped it or had Velcro at some point. I would just slide that whole thing out and put new stuff. Uh, I don't think you'd want that fridge anyway. But this whole thing lifts up and then you attach the belt buckles over there. Um, oh yeah, I didn't take these curtains off, so I'll just leave that. But um, I mean, accessories, yeah, he has these magnetic things that had those everywhere for your phone or tablet. These curtains were good. I just tied them back or kind of put them back. Um, and now we can fire it up so you can hear it. And I know this is a little longer video and I apologize about that, but we I just did a bunch of stuff to it. So I figured you'd want to know. And it's push button. That's a correct time, 
I, ad I adjusted it. Yeah, everything's still pretty cold. I just moved it over here. And there is a check engine light. Battery amps, oil pressure. And here I'll tell you about it real quick. That check engine light, I have replaced a couple items and this is why I think that it might be deleted. That engine light calls for a crank and cam sensor. Your crank is right down there. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera. It's hard to see because I also got the sun in my face. See where it's the clean connector? That one and then the cam is in kind of in there. And then that's the main connector that goes into the cam as well. I cleaned that up, there was oil. That's what it called for and the check engine will not clear. So those are brand, that's a brand new crank and I mean cam and crank sensor uh, from Cummins. New O-ring and everything. Uh, they're actually the same part number and that did not clear it. Uh, but on the computer, it said something about regen light deleted. Uh, I, and no, so I think that's a notification that someone did basically not to remind them of regen. But the problem is if the crank and cam sensor were going bad, that truck would not run this way. It would stumble, it would go into limp mode. It probably wouldn't even crank because it doesn't know the position of, or it's having trouble with the position of the uh, crank and cam. So you could tell, obviously it sounds good. I think it was just an East Coast truck. Yeah, this was actually from the light bar. But I took this panel off, new bolts and stuff.
uh, windows are tinted. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably strip them, you know, typical stuff gets in the felt and just scratch this all up. So that'll probably be a bear coming off. That won't be fun. It looks like older tin. But I mean, bones wise, it's just a solid truck. You know, I mean, it runs well, comfortable, feels good going down the road. The steering wheel's off a little bit about there when you're driving. So you could pull the steering wheel realign it, but it's probably more of like an alignment issue. It's really, really common for older trucks. All this work slide. Oh yeah, the rear's dropping right now. It's really hard to see it in the rear view. Truck's pretty long wheelbase. Jake brakes work. No fog lights. I think the truck came with fog lights, took him out, or looks like he may have had a hit the front bumper, which is really common. Rear work lights work. They're all just those red LEDs that you probably saw in the photo. But then if you scroll in the menu, let me see it here. It says that there is a fault, but it's under. Oh, where are you? It says that it's under. It says it's like the speed sensor or something but that doesn't make any sense, so. I'll find it. Yeah. Hard to do this with one hand shifting at 18 speed. So now I'm in the high side of the splitter. I'm also in low. The throttle is touchy. tons of slop in the steering wheel like you do with older sleepers which is real common kingpin you know issues so that's like about it I know it's kind of hard to see definitely a little different definitely more comfortable you know on a long haul shifted it into the third position I just well I don't have enough room but yeah it would want to kick out of that third and then in high it's seventh so yeah eventually you know if someone wanted to drop the trans but it's a it's an easy fix once the transmission's out we have a full rebuild shop over over in that warehouse down there Yeah, 
now that I did the um, shifter bushing. Now that I did the shifter bushing and it has the polyurethane bushing down in there. Um, I mean, a huge difference, at least on the shifter side. So... So once again, that's a 2010 and uh, let me know if you have any questions.